All right, let's do the Elden Ring Shadow Peggy, er, uh, Shadow of the Ur Tree gameplay reveal trailer. I'm done. I'm done with the fucking Kanye West dumb debate nonsense. This has been a fucking debate heavy day, baby. Finally, some good goddamn news. Pure and radiant, he wields love to shrive clean the hearts of men. There is nothing more terrifying. forsaken place blood must spill blood of your fellows they are truly faithful yes I'll do a new playthrough they were never saints they just happen to be on the losing side of a war No, I'll do a new playthrough Mother. up to the point of the DLC because usually, usually the DLC is, it starts at a certain position. Like it start it's not at the end of the game usually, right? Or is it super late game? Wouldst thou truly lordship sanction in one so bereft of life? I presume you, too, are keen to know just what kind Mikola is doing here. <coughs> Of the race of gold shall all meet death. Is this a good the new race of restless flame? Come now, touch the withered arm and travel to the realm of shadow. I will not be far behind. May we meet again. Holy shit. It seems like it starts at Mox Palace, which can either be early slash late game. Early game if you do PvP and unlock the portal that way, or late if you wait until the frozen mountain to find the portal. Um, in the most from software fashion, I suspect that this will be significantly harder. It feels like this is a full blown game. Like this is, it's giving, uh, Shadow Hunt. Is that what it was called? Like the Wild Hunt, Wild Hunt, which is like a DLC, but it's more than a DLC, if that makes sense. Like Wild Hunt was a DLC, but it was, uh, it was a whole ass game almost in and of itself. I don't believe From Software would cook people with $40 and make it like a limited expansion, a tiny expansion. DS3 DLC was stupid fucking hard. I think Miyazaki said this will be the size of Limgrave or larger. <sighs> it's 
To prepare you from from software's largest expansion yet, we've got the Shadow of the Earth Tree release date and trailer. Be sure to check out our, our interviews with Miyazaki, originating the Souls-like genre, potential Bloodborne remake. Oh, I saw this part. I saw that he said a Bloodborne remake. I can't speak on it right now. However, he basically said, I can't speak on a Bloodborne remake at the moment. Unfortunately, I can't speak on it. That means he didn't say no. But he said that the new, the new technology makes it new new uh availability in tech makes it interesting something along those lines shadow earth tree follows the story of the kind mikula melania's twin brother mikula is the demigod offspring of queen marika and radagon the twins are born with a curse with mikula doomed to be eternally young and never grow to an adult you will follow mikula's footsteps in the land of shadow area in the dlc like you follow the sites of grace in the base game the DLC area has been confirmed to occupy the same space as the lands between, but it has been physically disconnected and it will involve a warp of source to get there. The story will also involve, involve Queen Marika and what she did in the shadow land and just what led Mikula to follow her into the land of shadow. Additionally, Mesmer is the man in red seen in the first trailer for the DLC and he's an important figure who rivals the other demigods in the shadow of the earth tree. He has a key element of shadow to him, which is also an important theme throughout the DLC. Diving deeper into Mikula's past might help us understand where the DLC story is going to go. It starts with Mikula wanting to become an adult, so we use the Halic Tree, the late game legacy dungeon where players fight Melania. Here he lay in a cocoon with the aim of growing older in parallel with the tree, binding himself by watering the tree with his blood. He intended for the Halic tree to grow into an Erd tree, but before he could complete his task, Mikula fell into a deep slumber. His cocoon is actually discovered in Elder Ring after defeating Mog, Lord of Blood. So that's like pretty late game. Mog stole the cocoon, morphed into blood, entered it. To be fair, by the way, I did play a very different game than the one that is now available with all of the fucking nerfs that came. Like when I played Elden Ring, I feel like it was a ginormously different game. People who beat the game 1.0 with Mimic Terror are sweating. Yes, I am people that you are mentioning. I, I had the Rivers Cheese at the time. I had the Mimic Cheese at the time. I, or no, it wasn't even Rivers. Rivers is for PvP. I did Moonvale, I think, right? I did all the fucking cheeses. No, I did Rivers for... I did Rivers specifically for uh, a PvP when I was cooking everybody. I was a Moonvale Andy for most of the game. Now, usually, they fucking kill those cheeses pretty quickly. Didn't you beat pre-nerf Redondo? Yes, I did. I think I did. Pretty sure I beat Radon before they nerf Radon, but that doesn't mean anything. That's just one thing. There's only one aspect, even though it was fucking... I don't say it was never hard. It was... It was hard as hell, dude. Are you kidding me? You can do Blasphemous Blade Cheese now. Healing is busted even more than Rivers. So that's the funniest part about it is that like every From Software fan ultimately knows that if one cheese closes out, another cheese opportunity presents itself. They never just let you have no cheese. There's always cheese. So don't act like there isn't going to be a new way for me to find a different kind of cheese. I also used to farm in the blood area too. I did that as well to farm levels sometimes, if you guys recall. But like, you got to do that sometimes with the bows that I'm sure that still exists. That's not even a cheese at that point. That's just a farm location. Yeah. Yeah. With the bird. With the bow and arrow and the bird.
The only people that don't cheese are people who basically put uh, handicaps on themselves. People that go around and are like, I'm going to finish the game without a single hit. Or I'm going to finish the game. Uh, I'm going to fucking finish the game by uh, only using punches or some shit. You know what I mean? Like no hit runners, stuff like that. Or people that are like, I'm going to finish the game by using a fucking flute somehow. Everyone else, let's be real, everyone else in the From Software fandom, if you're calling Caleb the blood location, you're fuck brother. I, I don't think it was Caleb. I think it was somewhere. Was it Caleb? No, Caleb is Ohio. This was uh, in the other area. Yeah, it was Mog's Palace. I'm right and chatter is wrong. If you just explore a good amount, the game is designed for you to over level. Yes. They modded bosses to be invisible. Wait. Yeah. Are you a mage build? No, I'm a dex cheeser every time. I'm a dex cheeser through and through. Caleb is Ohio. Caleb is better farming where you kill the homunculus guys. They're so slimy. Someone beat the game using their mind. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's just like there's fucking insane stuff out there. I'm Zoe Dillahunty Light, and I have a feast, nay, a banquet for you today as we at Eurogamer got an exclusive interview with Hidetaka Miyazaki of That's crazy. Microsoft. We got the chance to pick his brains about the new Elden Ring DLC, Shadow of the Earth Tree, and the Bloodborne Ring. We let strength users get away with claiming they're anti-cheese for too long. I agree. The only thing, the only From Software fans that claim that they never cheese are strength builders. And to be fair, they cheese too. Everybody does. Remaster, we're all craving. From soft boss Hidetaki Miyazaki told our deputy news editor, Ed Nightingale, that this is the biggest expansion the company has ever worked on. Judging from the trailer, as many suspected, Shadow of the Erd Tree will follow the story of Mikola, Melania's brother. There's also mention of the realm of shadow accessed through Mikola's withered arm that Mog was guarding, perhaps hinting at the new area we'll all be exploring. Further, we see a variety of new environments, haunted grasslands, fiery caverns, mystical ruins, as well as some magnificently terrifying new bosses. Strength is how the game Let's is truly meant to be played. Interview, Shut up. Shall we? Shut up. Don't say stuff like that. Because if that was the fucking case, if that was the if that was the case, then there there wouldn't be so many different builds. Okay, this is the this is the attitude of a pure strength guy who says, "Oh, mages are cheesing," which is true, by the way. Dex builds are not cheesing, but mages are cheesing. Okay, if you do if you use any kind of if you use magic, you are a cheater. You're playing a different game. You're playing a different game. It's just not from software. That's it. This is not a from software game. <laughs> oh, look at me. I'm fucking standing behind, standing from afar and just fucking blasting. They put dex builds in the game because there's no easy mode. No, they put the fucking mirror thing, whatever, the clone. What was it called? The tear, mimic tear in the game because there is no easy mode. We. If you're wondering, Miyazaki confirmed to us that Game of Thrones author George R. R. Martin has not provided fresh material. As for George's involvement, essentially it is the same as it was with the base game. Do you like this game more than Sekiro? For me, nothing tops Sekiro. No, nothing tops Sekiro. But Sekiro also is the hardest from software game. Said Miyazaki. The DLC Shadow of the Erd Tree is based on one part of that original mythos that he penned for us. It's not a brand new mythos that he's written specifically for Shadow of the Earth Tree. He has not created something new which informed the design of the DLC. Sekiro was the easiest one? No, it's not. Sekiro is the hardest one because it's the only From Software game where you can't overlevel. 
I game for hours. I'll see. It's simply another part of the original story that we thought fit to tell as a new expansion. So, what can we expect from Shadow of the Erd Tree? Compared with previous games, Miyazaki said this DLC is our largest expansion to date in terms of overall volume. Miyazaki told us that, in terms of where the game takes place, it's a brand new area of a brand new map which includes a structure similar to what you find in the base game with field areas, legacy dungeons and other dungeons of various scale. The map is going to be huge. In Miyazaki's words, in terms of pure surface area, you're going to be faced with something larger even than Limgrave in the base game. FromSoft has also developed its approach to field design. Concerning the world, Miyazaki told us that, while the overall structure is the same, while we have these open field areas, we have the legacy dungeon areas, and the general divide between these areas is quite distinct. This time, we wanted to go more in depth, he said, and bring a more dense and richer level design, which brings these types of layout together a little more seamlessly. So, there won't be, hopefully, as distinct a divide between these areas this time. There, of course, will be large open areas. There, of course, will be legacy dungeons. But we've also experimented with something a little more in between these as well, to bring up more diverse gameplay experiences. Further, there will be over 10 new boss fights, plus plenty of new weapons, new equipment, and new skills to find. And eight new weapon categories have been added to account for the new weapon types, which begs the question, what could they possibly be? Anyway, ideas for the DLC began to form around the end of Elden Ring's development, as there were remaining ideas that were clearly not going to fit in and would make more sense as DLC. Development then began around the time updates and patches for the base game had begun to settle down. Expansions for previous FromSoft games are notorious for upping the difficulty. Bloodborne's The Old Hunters especially. When we asked about the difficulty spike in light of The Old Hunters, Miyazaki stated that in terms of raw power meters and difficulty level, you could say Shadow of the Erd Tree is on a similar footing with the end game of Elden Ring. As to our general approach to the level of challenge, this has not changed from how we approached the base game. A new element of progression unique to this DLC area has also been implemented, which further heightens play of I think I solidified myself as a, a, a legacy legendary gamer when I fucking basically one tap Margit. Well, how many, how many tries did it take for me to take down Margit? I remember it being like... I remember being... It was like, it was a definitely like a, a uniquely low amount of times where everyone was like, what the fuck is happening? This is a historical. Give me a break. The only break you get is at the top of the hour when there's a three minute ad break. Okay. freedom to walk away, level up, and come back later, though the general approach to the level of the challenge has yeah, not changed. I remember it being incredibly anti-Ukrainian. <laughs> because I was raising money for Ukraine at the time. And I was planning to donate per death. And then I, like, clapped Margit. And then the second boss after him, too, I forget what his name was. And then everyone was like, what the fuck are you doing? You're not dying. <laughs> so then I went and then I died a million times to that one like over level demon in the fucking main area. And it pissed me off. That moment when you got your gamer card is when you shellac dozens of chatters in PvP. Oh yeah, I went like 40 vert. I went like three for 40. I just looked at the stream, you two tap Margit. I went like literally 40 for, like I lost three times against fucking chatters. Every chatter that talks shit, I fucking melted. 
You cheese with rivers? Bitch, they had the cheese too. Now we're talking about... Look, look, look. Look at the copium. Look at the copium. Look at the copium. Look at the fucking copium. People saying, oh, you mimic teared. You mimic cheese. It's like, bro, I PVP'd. Hansanabi takes on market, does the unbelievable right with ease. Get those fucking bets in, boys. Get those bets in, boyos. It's market time. Yeah, we had the uh, fails over here. There is conduct to FromSoft PvP. Yes, I know. Chatters that fucking... Chatters that fucking had... So much goddamn smoke for me. Chatters that had so much goddamn smoke for me got awfully quiet after I fucking ripped through their guts. Chatters would attack me in the middle of emoting and still get, yeah, and they would still lose. Changed one bit. Miyazaki explained that we wanted to provide these challenging encounters and these menacing threats. And in order to do that, we wanted to give the player a lot of freedom of approach. We wanted them to feel free about how they chose and when they chose to approach and tackle these hardships. And I think Melania was one major example in the base game. She is an extremely tough boss battle, but she's also optional. So players who look for that sort of challenge in our games We'll find a challenge on equal footing in the DLC as well. On the challenge from Soft Games Provide, and the challenge Shadow of the Earth Tree will definitely subject us to, Miyazaki explained how the From Soft Games famous difficulty level has a much deeper meaning to him than simply hard for hard's sake. I think as a theme that those elements of hardship and that feeling of accomplishment simply has value as an experience. He yes! Said. As a player and as a person. That's I why I, that's what I said. Oh my God. Me and Miyazaki are like this, bro. He's just like me for real. This is not something that can be easily achieved or replicated in our lives. And I think it's something that carries with it inherent risk. In other media, especially, it's difficult to replicate that hardship and accomplishment. And I think that therein is the appeal and the value of FromSoft games. Of course, it can be felt in parts of other media, but in terms of that risk and reward and that sense of accomplishment that you feel with the act of play, I think that's very unique to games, and I think it's very powerful. And, of course, we just had to ask Miyazaki if Shadow of the Earth Tree will again include a poison swamp. In a word, yes, he said. But this was actually a point of introspection for me after creating the base game. It was only after creating it that I realized I really like to create poison swamps. And this was a little place of introspection and reflection for me. So maybe when players reach the poison swamp in the DLC, they too will feel a little bit of this retrospection. Shadow of the Earth Tree will be released across all platforms on the 21st of June, but before you go, Miyazaki did have something to say about the Bloodborne remake we are all gagging for. Miyazaki discussed with us the possibility of a Bloodborne remake and the benefits of waiting for new hardware on which to revisit the beloved PlayStation 4 classic. It is a title we hold very dear just as Wait, much what do you mean? I misunderstood the benefits of new hardware. I thought he meant like there is new hardware, so we're, we're, it's time. Did I totally misunderstand that? What the fuck? As our fans, Miyazaki told Eurogamer when questioned about the possibility of a Bloodborne remake. It does make me very happy to see that there are still so many people passionate about it. But would a remake benefit from newer hardware to make the release worthwhile? From Software's Demon Souls, for example. He's not waiting for PS6. No shot, dude. Was remade as a. Dude, there's nothing gnarlier, nastier, more gross than fucking Sony making a Last of Us remake, a Last of Us 2 remake, like, and not making a Bloodborne remake. <laughs> Okay, you guys just hate money, it seems. It makes no sense. Do you hate money? Is this a thing that you despise? Sony is like, no, we are actually anti-capitalist. 
We love losing money, as a matter of fact, and we hate making money, which is why we won't do it. It's like Last of Us Remake 2 came out with the same exact fucking software with like not even a little bit improvement. Like there was no improvement. Bloodborne is making me consider nuking my computer trying to download a PS4 emulator. He's 100% talking about next-gen consoles like Bethesda is for Elder Scrolls 6. Okay, I'm done with Bethesda after Starfield, okay? Bethesda needs to get back on my good side. I don't give a fuck. A PS5 launch title after originally launching on PS3. A double console generation leap that meant the re-release felt more significant. I think having new hardware is definitely a part of what gives these remakes value. Because of like fucking said. pronouns! Things have you played Fallout? Fuck yes, I you have. You weren't able to achieve on previous generations of hardware, ways you weren't able to render specific expressions. New hardware sometimes makes it possible. However, I wouldn't say that's the be all and end all, Miyazaki continued. I think purely from a user perspective, modern hardware also allows more players to appreciate all the games. And so, it ends up being a simple reason, but as a fellow player, I think that accessibility is important. I think that can be the driving force between bringing an old game to a new platform. Whether a Bloodborne remake eventually sees the light of day, regardless of whether it may arrive on either PS5 or PS6, Miyazaki said he was very happy to see so many passionate fans calling for a Bloodborne remake to happen. Miyazaki apologised for being unable to say anything more specific about remaking the PS4 exclusive, but said he was thrilled at the game's continued response. Yeah, he's but like very happy, which is why he loves... <laughs> means he's seen the memes, chat. It means he's seen the memes and he still doesn't want to make you happy. Think about that. It makes me very... And yes, it's not coming on for the PS... Uh, I mean, it's not, it's not coming out for the PC. ...very happy to see because it's a title with a lot of specific memories, both for me and the staff who worked on it, he said. And when we see those passionate voices in the community, of course it makes us feel thrilled. It makes us feel very fortunate to have that and to have those memories. FromSoft does carefully consider what it wants to make, so... If a Bloodborne remake is on the cards, it sounds like they feel no pressure to add anything that may mimic features in other titles just because they've been successful. We don't feel any particular pressure to continue making the same thing, said Miyazaki. What I feel is that when creating that kind of environment or with that kind of initiative to create something because it's been successful or because it succeeded in the past, that generally doesn't go very well, he told us. What we have seen is that players seem to enjoy our games, and so they're giving us the chance to continue making what we enjoy and what we like. And it Why are remakes so popular nowadays? Is no one asking for Bloodborne 2? Well, the reason why no one's asking for Bloodborne 2 is because people are being realistic. <laughs> Obviously, Bloodborne 2 would be better, but it's just like, it's going to take a fucking long ass time helps us to not have that feeling of being trapped. If players continue to enjoy our games, we will continue to make them in the way that we like. We will just have to wait and see then if a Bloodborne remake is on the cards. And that's everything we found out from Hidetaki Miyazaki of FromSoft about the Elden Ring DLC Shadow of the Erdtree coming to your veins and mine on the 21st of June 2024. What are you most excited for about the DLC, and did anything from this interview surprise you? Let me know in the comments, and a massive thank you to Ed Nightingale for sharing his interview with me, Zoe Delahunty Light, so I in turn can share it with you. That's crazy. Official gameplay reveal. Isn't there also a trailer or just a gameplay review? Are you going to check out?